by the clock. The sacrifices that you have to give of yourself, even when you don't have anything to sometimes give, can be difficult. So I was praying and I was seeking God all week about, you know, work and some things that I was experiencing. And, you know, um, Friday um, I had the opportunity of blessing to spend some time with Sister Alicia. And we had really good conversations on, you know, just where God is taking us and sometimes making decisions that might not be famous to a lot of people, but it's best for our family. And one thing that I realized through those experiences and those decisions is the biggest thing is tell your neighbor no more excuses. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. <laughs> because I don't think that we as people sometimes use so many excuses when it comes to God that we realize through the challenges that we're not where we need to be, not because of God, but because of the excuses that we put in forth. Prime example, one of the challenges that I've experienced in the last several weeks has been my fear of leadership at work, my fear of stepping up and my inability, my in a, me feeling like my inabilities are bigger than my abilities. Let me say that again. <laughs> Feeling like sometimes that my inabilities are bigger than my abilities. Seeing my weaknesses before I see my strengths and using so many excuses to not do what God has called me to do. And sometimes that can be very difficult. You know, sometimes I want to be able to say I'm not a leader today. <laughs> Use an excuse to say I'm going to sit down today or I'm not going to hear from God today. I just want to chill today. And God continues to tell me that I really don't have a day off. And that sometimes can be challenging. So as God was dealing with me, and he didn't know, my husband didn't know that while he was growing, God was dealing with me on my stuff that I was dealing with, um, with um, work. But God said to me, daughter, stop telling me excuses. Tell, stop telling me about your inabilities because I already know about them. Because they're not inabilities to me. <laughs> they're not inabilities to me. And so I want, I want to read um, a scripture in Jeremiah. I love the book of Jeremiah. But one of the scriptures that I'm going to do 1, 4 through 14 and that's 17 through 19. Which says, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 through 14, and then we're going to drop to 17 through 19, which says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in, before, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. Huh. What did that sound like? Okay. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, and you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah. <laughs> Put your name there. Veronica, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word, my promise over your life, basically. And the word of the Lord came to me a second time saying, Veronica, what do you see? 
And I said, I see a boiling pot and it is facing away from the north. And the Lord said, out of the north, calamity shall break forth. Now, on all the inhabitants of the land. And now drop down to 17 through 19, which says, therefore, prepare yourself and arise and speak to them all that I commanded you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. <laughs> what are you fearing for? <laughs> For behold, I have made you this day a fortified sea, city and an iron pillar and a bronze wall against the whole land, against the king of Judah, against the priests and the prince and against the people of the land. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. But Jeremiah, he had to learn through the process. The process ain't easy. <laughs> Sometimes we got to be rebuked <laughs> during the process. His excuses were as though he wanted it, but he was fearful to grab it. And the one thing I want to, num number one, the excuse, the task is demanding. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, the task is demanding. When God told me that, I, now this sermon came out of the issues that I'm having with my job. Not the big issues, but the issues internally. I said, Jesus, this task is demanding. Can I get a break? Jeremiah was to call to be a prophet to the nations in Jeremiah 1.5. Not a priest like his father and grandfather. <laughs> We think because our mommy and daddy's called to do that, we must be called to do that too. No, this is a prime example that God did not choose him to be a priest like his heritage. He was called to be a prophet. A prophet was a chosen and authorized spokesman for God who declared God's word to the people. We often think of prophets as people who could tell the future, but that's not what they are. A prophet is a spokesperson that God speaks through mm -hmm. to the people of God. <laughs> they can't speak the present <laughs> and sometimes can speak with future ramifications. Sometimes they will come and bring a warning. Mm -hmm. They are forth tellers, not fortune tellers. So while we go to all these prophets and say, oh, what, did the Lord give you a word for me? Mm -hmm. That's no different than you going to paying that $10 and getting your hand read. I'm back and I said, when I was in the shower, I said, Father, grant him rest in Jesus' name. Amen. Grant him, he don't need to know, he didn't have to hear that at that moment. That's right. Grant his body rest in Jesus' name. And literally when I came in the room, that's just like my son right there. That's what he looked like. <laughs> that is the God that I serve. Because why? I said, God, why would you have me deliver this word? If one of the requests that I have for you, God, is that you grant my husband rest. Because I didn't know what he was about to deal with today. Hmm. If he was here all day, all night. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Having to deal with what he dealt with today, mm -hmm. all of y'all men would have had to hold his arms up. But I said, Father, thank you for at least allowing me to go through what I went through to write what I wrote and give me the grace to deliver it in a couple hours. That could be you. Just like I told my brother, I said it this morning. You got your word of encouragement ready? Let's do it. He said, it's all God. It's all God. Not knowing that he was going to be my partner with delivering this word. Being ready in and out of season. Amen. Never knowing when you're going to be called. And that is true when it comes to this ministry. You could be called at any time. One, two, three, four, five. It, you might as well just my son's life smiling back there. But it's true. You could be called any time. And you have to be ready to say yes. And if you don't say yes, I would love to hear one of these excuses. Let's move on. All right. So the next one. Excuse two. Uh -huh. 
My talent is inadequate, most dependent on God's own all sufficiencies. Amen. Let me say again. I know that I am not good at grammar, but I work in HR. <laughs> Let me say that again. Let me say it this time. Baby, one of eye to eye. You spiritual mom is not good at this. But I work in HR. Doing what all day? You know why? Because I know I've been there three years and I have not done that on my own. It's because I have fully 110, 30,000 percent dependent on God before I put same. That means I've copied and pasted and put on word and said to my husband and said to my boss and said to Alicia and said to everybody and mama before I press send. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just keeping it real. I know my weakness. I don't boast about my strengths. I boast about my weaknesses because I know that they're my weaknesses. But eventually, all of it's going to become my strength because it all belongs to God. And there's no weakness in Him. Come on, come on. Uh -huh. Come on. Uh -huh. His strength is made perfect in me. His glory is manifested through my weaknesses. Right. Right. I send that email, and somehow, in some way, it turns out to be okay. When I, my brother can piggyback on this, when I was little with Eli, I could not even speak. And the doctor said I would not speak. But guess what? It was by the grace of God that I'm even standing up here and articulating. Because I wonder if I was a little girl and I was pretty determined. My brother and them say I was determined in the bad way. But I was determined as a little girl just to say, don't you to I knew, stop. I knew what I was trying to say. <laughs> don't you understand? I was about to laugh at my godson all the time because he don't care. If that, he telling you something and you better listen. He knows what his heart is saying. <laughs> it's your job to articulate what his heart is Hello. saying. Hello. It's no different. Listen, this is what I have. I have a whole bunch of insecurities and weaknesses. It's before you. Can you make something out of it, God? Because I promise what comes out I can't say I did it on my own because on my own I messed up a whole lot of things. But with your help, you can make something. We talk about it all the time, us three. Some, well, we've talked about it even with my sister, Sister Tiffany. You know, to be a someone that has been fired from a company and be rehired mm -hmm. and then be put as a supervisor of a department if she would have used an excuse. Come on. Come if on. she would have said, I'm not applying again because I'm too fearful. Come on, if come she would have said, now nah, I'm sitting with the same people that might have been involved in my fire, eh, I'm good. No, she looked at the challenge ahead of her and she said, you know what? I'm going back after this. This has been good to me and my family. I know that I might have not been the best of the best, but I'm coming back and I'm going to prove, not to no one, but to God, that I can do this and I can do it the right way Amen. with his strength. Amen. Amen. Now what? God is using her so people can look at, wow, that's who she serve? Who? What, what did you hear? Tiffany? Tiffany's back? How she get? Somebody messed up with the system. Somebody must have did something to her paperwork. Hold on, her sister-in-law working there too. No, no, no. Step aside and let me tell you who it was. Come on. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I had nothing to do with it. 